Now we're on to the Analyze Your Data tab. Now in this tab, we have a number of questions, but it all has to do with taking the data and summarizing it at a category and time period level. So we're gonna start out by categorizing per year. So you see we have our start and our end date for each year, so January 1st and then December 31st at the end of the year. And I wanna show you how these dates are set up. The first one's hard-coded, meaning we've actually typed in 1-1-2016. However, the end of the year is actually a formula. We're using the EO month formula, which takes you to the end of the month that is X months away. So in this case, 11 months after January is December, and then we go to the end of the month, which gives us that 12-31-2016. Now, how do we get the next year? Well, we know that the next day of the next year is just the ending day plus one. So in our next cell, we have the previous end plus one, that gives us the start. And again, we can use EO month with 11 months into the future again. So that really allows us to build a dynamic model that we can now drag out as far as you need for however many years you want. And we can use to guide our sum ifs that we're gonna to use to summarize our data. And that's what we're gonna do in this table is we're gonna write one function here in the top left corner that we can copy across and then down so it's just one formula that answers us all these questions of how much did we spend in each category each year. All right, so to write our sum ifs here, we're gonna start by summing the range, the total expenses that we had. So all the amounts that we have here on the categorize your data tab. The first thing that we wanna to, to add up based on is the classification. So we'll highlight that whole classification, come back to our analyze the data tab, and then move over to select utilities in this case for the first row. Now we want this to be able to drag down and drag to the right. When we drag down, it's gonna move from utilities to gas. So that's just fine. We don't have to lock the row reference. However, as we drag across, we need it to keep in column B. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit F4 three times to lock in that column reference. So now it's gonna be locked on column B. Now the next criteria we have is that the date needs to be in between January 1st and December 31st of 2016. So let's go get our dates from the previous tab. So we're going to pull our date range in here. And as we come back, our first category, our first criteria is that the date is going to be greater than or equal to, and that's going to be greater than or equal to the start of the year. And again, we want this to move side to side, but not move down because our dates are always gonna be there in column 23. So we're gonna do F2 twice to lock in that 23 there. All right, and I realize I got a couple, I got an extra colon in there, let's fix that. And now let's do our date range one more time so the dates are less than or equal to that last date, which is gonna be the end of the year. So we're gonna do less than or equal to, and then we need to go back and get our December, making sure to lock that two times as well. Now we get our first answer and we see a zero. So that could be a problem or it could just be that nothing happened in that month for that data. So let's copy this, paste the formulas over, Alt ES F for formulas. And now we see data that looks more normal. But before we go on, let's actually check that it's right. Well, we know what the sum was from the last tab. So let's just do some quick auto summing. So I'm using alt equals to do my auto sum. I'm just gonna copy that down and we see that the total across this entire array is 36,074. So if we go back to our first tab, we actually had that answer for the sum of all the value, all the transactions. So we verified that when we break it down into categories by date, we get the same answer. We have all the data there. Now we can use this to answer a couple of our questions. So our first question, how much did we spend on utilities in 2017 and 18? Let's just add up the 2017 and the 2018 numbers. Our second question is then how much did wants increase from 2019 to 18? Well, here we can just take our 2019 number minus our 2018 number. Since our data is summarized, we can answer these questions very easily. The last one is what's the percentage of total spends on groceries and necessities? So let's just come down and add up groceries total plus necessities total and we'll divide by the total we have here at the bottom, and we get our 41.4%, which is correct. All right, now we're gonna do the same idea, but instead of per year, we're gonna do it on a per month basis. And per month, irrespective of what year it's in. So we're gonna add up all the January data in column one, 
all the February data in column two, etc. So let's build our sum ifs again. We're going to build it the same way, starting out with the amount data and then our category data as well. So we're going to build this exactly the same how we did it the first time, making sure that we lock just the column there, F4 three times. And now our second criteria is the month number. Again, we built this out on our previous tab, so we can go ahead and use that. And again, reference our month, lock just the row two times for F4. Now we got that copied. We can fill it in here. Again, just paste those formulas across. And I'm doing that so I don't mess up the formatting that I already have there, right? I already have a nice box around the area I'm working with, so I just don't want to mess up that formatting. All right, so now we've filled in our formula across our whole table here. We want to make sure it's right. So we want to essentially make sure we have this 36074 number again. So let's just go ahead and do our auto sums. We're going to copy that across, control R. I'm going to do it same across the columns. So alt equals gives me my auto sum and then control D to fill that down. Now we actually see that we have an error. Down here I have 36,152, not my 36,074. And this is why we need to be careful when we use auto sum. Because if we go back and look at our formula here, our first auto sum we used included that month header in there. We had a month header that's a number, the number one, so it added that one up. So we need to change our formula here to not include that header. Let's correct that and then we get everything corrected. So AutoSum's great, it's a really good tool to use, just make sure you're careful when you use it that you're not adding up more than you think you are. All right, let's finish two other things here before we go back to answering the questions. The first is the percentage of the wants category divided by the total spent in the month. And the other is the, percent the total spent in the month divided by the total spent across all months. We have that there, let's just take those. We're gonna copy them right, control R. All right, so we've got all our data. Let's go answer some questions. All right, so our first question is how much is spent across all Decembers? Well, we can go look for that number over here in the December column, go to the bottom, 2374, that matches up. Now, what's the max spent across all months? Well, we've used this function before, so we can get our max function back out. And let's just take the max over all those months not including the ver the total across all months, and we see 44.28. Now it asks us which month has the maximum total spend. So this is built nicely for an X lookup. So we're just gonna look up the value that we found before, and let's look that up in that column. So if we look that up, sorry, in that row, we look it up in there and then return back to us the corresponding month. So that should tell us, in this case, it looks like it's gonna be month 10, and that checks out. Now our next question is a dynamic question based on this top value of insurance. So what we want to do here is look up the how much was spent on insurance in the month that is 10. And we don't really know that it's going to be month 10 before we start, and we don't know that we're going to want insurance versus wants or entertainment. So that's where the dynamic nature comes in. So what I'm going to use is an index. So I'm going to index over the entire array of data, so everything in the box that we started with. That's the area I want to pull in. Now i got to tell the index function what row I want and which column I want. So the column I know is column 10. We already figured that out. But I need to figure out what row insurance is in. So let's use a match function. So we're going to match on insurance. We're going to match over here in our list of names. It's going to tell us what position it is within that list. And then we can reference our 10 just from the previous answer. And now we get the 468.62. So our answer there is coming because we were able to use a match inside of our index function. And it's a two-dimensional index function, which isn't the typical kind of index match style that we always use. Now we want to know which month had the highest percentage spent on wants. So we're going to use an X lookup, but we're going to use an X lookup with our max embedded inside. So this is just an alternative way to do something like we were doing on the last problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to look up, and we want to look up the max of a range. So the max, we don't know where it, what it is yet, but we're going to look at the percentage of wants. So we want to find the biggest percentage through that range. And we want to look it up in that same range. So we want to know what position it corresponds to. And then we're going to find that in return the month that that occurred. 
So that's how we're setting this formula. So we're using a max along with in, that's inside the X lookup to get us the value back, which is the month in this case, the month nine. All right. So another simple question after this, a little bit easier one is what is just the max of the total spending? So we already built our total spending out. So let's just get our total spending, making sure we don't include that 100% at the end. We see we get a name error. So I just did not finish my function. So let's get back to max of the whole total column. Oh, and we can actually see the problem here. So let's escape back out. We see down here, I accidentally typed a parentheses here. So let's undo control Z and let's just restart that. So that's kind of a nice reminder. Sometimes when we see an error message, we got to go undo a mistake we made in typing. So let's do it here. We got our max. Great. We've already summed up the total. Sometimes it's great to just check your data. In this case, making sure all the percentages line up to 100%. If they don't, there should be an error somewhere. All right, the very last question, we have one more sum ifs to do. So let's hop down here. We're just gonna sum by day of the week. So this is gonna be our easiest one yet. So we're just gonna go sum ifs. We wanna sum all the amounts. We got our days of the week over here. So let's suggest all, select all those. And then our date, we don't have to lock it necessarily because we're not dragging this anywhere except to the right. We go all the way across, paste our formulas, and now we have our data. And the question was asking which one gives us the maximum. If we want to see it easily, we can just, let's find our max, 13.29.6. That's happening on Monday. So let's get our answer in there. And let's stop and think about it for a second. So we can, we'll just be a little bit lazy here and we'll put Monday in. It's okay when it's a one-off question to do like things like that. Obviously you can write your functions more dynamically if you'd like. All right, so let's look at this data and think about it for one second before we wrap up. So what we see here is that we spend a lot on Mondays, quite a bit on Tuesdays, and kind of similar amounts around 5,000 on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. And then we spend no money on Saturday or Sunday. That could be true. Does it seem likely? Not really. It seems like what's more likely is that this data never reports transactions on the weekends. And that could very well be the case based on how their systems are built. But in this case, we also think that's necessarily true, most likely, because Mondays are so much higher, right? Mondays are higher and Tuesdays. So there's probably a one or two day reporting delay that happens on the weekends. So when we're doing analysis like this, you know, take the data for what it is, but always think critically about does the data that's coming into me look like good data? In this case, I wouldn't really trust it as far as giving me day of the week data. All right, this wraps up the analyze your data challenge. I'd recommend you run through this a couple times, get familiar with the functions, practice them, practice the keyboarding that goes along with it. That's where the timed exercise is coming in. By timing yourself, you can get faster, more comfortable with the functions and more ready to compete when we get the official rounds of the competition in just a few weeks.